So on January 26, it's the two-year anniversary since I lost my job. And I want to share a story about how I felt like a winner only just a few days after having the wind knocked out of me and my entire life changing. Now, that was before the world even changed. So all of this context isn't even with Corona in there. So January 26, I find out world's ending, career's ending, no longer going to be needed, my position's being eliminated. Get home that night, go through the conversations with my wife, trying to figure out what's the right next step, figuring out what I'm going to do, how much time do I have, what do I want to do, where do I want to put my time, who do I want to interview with, what kind of jobs do I want, whole bunch of questions. Well, also within this context was shutting down as much as we could to save some money. So we pulled the kids out of early care, so that way I was here, I would stay here at the house later, I would go in a little bit later, and I would be home early to get them off the bus. And that is the story that I want to share with you today, because often as a dad, we miss the simple moments almost because we fly right by them because we're focused on like, man, we got to get to work. We already saw five emails that already need our attention. And I was that guy. I was like, got to get her. Got it. My mindset was you got to get in early before you get behind and you got to get ahead before you get behind. So you got to get in there and you just got to rush and plow through the morning. And any day I was in there before eight, had a chance to sit down, process some things, drink a cup of coffee. If I could do that before the world started, boom, I was golden for the day. But what I was missing and what I had the desire probably for like the last six months prior leading up to it, because there was a gap. If you've been following the podcast, you know that the summer of 2019, I was a stay-at-home dad for 10 days. And this story defined and kind of cracked my dad's story open, wide open. And all I wanted was to be dad after that. So I had these itches and these issues of like trying to process going to work, wanting to be a dad, wanting to prioritize being a dad, all of these different things. Well, within the context of all of this, losing my job, these feelings are starting to come back. Like there's a part of me that's like, I don't want to get a job. I just want to be dad. Why can't I figure out a way to make this happen? That was a, a real thought that I had in my mind at the time. And I remember it was cold here, January morning. I think it, maybe it was even February 2nd, February 3rd is when I remember the time frame that I got the kids on the bus for the first time. So we had shut down early care. We told the buses, come pick the kids up. And it was that first morning that the kids got on the bus. They gave me a big giant hug. They got on the bus. I seen them walk the little footsteps up those stairs into the big yellow bus. And I remember thinking very vividly, I'd already won. I'd already won this entire journey that I was about ready to go on. That no matter what happened in the future, I just found the moment that matters. This moment, the one that I'm here getting the kids on the bus, this one that I had been chasing, this issue that I had internally, like, God, why can't I just stay a little bit more at home to get the kids on the bus and go into work a little bit later? Yeah, I would have been to work at 845, but I just wanted to get the kids on the bus. I don't like having to deprioritize my family for work. And here I have this moment. The world is coming down. I have no idea what certainty looks like anymore. And I get the kids on the bus. And then the same thing happens when they get off the bus that day. They get off. They see me. They come running. They give me a giant dad hug. And again, I'm thinking, man, I already won. This is it. This is all I need. And I remember specifically, probably for the next like two months, right up until Corona and the kids came home, even that next year in the fall, I remember specifically always, I was always outside getting on the bus. That was, and it still is to this day. I'm the dad out there making sure all the kids get on the bus from the neighborhood. But even when they get off the bus, I would specifically go outside and wait about five minutes before I thought they would get there so that I could see them get off the bus. Now the memory's kind of faded, the intentions kind of faded, the kids no longer get as excited, so there's not much as excitement there, but I'm still always hugging them when they get on the bus, I'm still being there when they get on the bus, and the reason I want to share this story with you is because as dads, we often overlook these simplistic moments like this. We overlook in the bustle of trying to build our career, we overlook the value that a simple moment of, hey, talking to your boss and be like, I want to get my kids in the bus. How can we make this work? And let it happen. Express your desire to your employer. In my case, I never had that conversation. 
Could I have? Yes. Would they have probably allowed it? Yes. Did I have the courage? No. And we've talked about why I didn't have that courage. So a lot of this kind of came to fruition of being able to find it, recognize what mattered, but then just realizing the big giant journey that I was getting ready to go on. It doesn't matter what happens in the future. All that mattered was I was here and I was there every single day to do it. Even to this day, every time the kids get on the bus, I'm still nostalgic. I'm still thinking like, man, there's going to be a day where the bus is no longer here and they're just going to be pulling out to go to high school. And it's going to be just like that. It's just going to be whew, one minute's there, next minute, boom, high school. It's going to seem like a blink of an eye in my mind. But I'm out there every day owning and appreciating those simple moments that can happen. So whether it be bus time or something else, Try to find the simple moments that you might just be glossing over and look for how can you create a conversation to cement those moments in your daily lives, whether it be maybe getting the kids lunch ready, making sure that they have a little note inside there every day, telling them what you think about them, what you wanted them to know about during the day. I've been writing a note every, probably for like the last three months, every kid gets a note in their lunchbox every day. It's those little things that will lead to the big difference. I recently heard a good friend of mine, Eric McDougal, he runs Evolved Marriage Mastermind. And he talked about if you take care of the moments, the years take care of themselves. And it hit me pretty hard because that's what we're talking about here. If you take care of the moments, the years take care of themselves. And so guys, that is your message for today. Find those moments, own them, appreciate the shit out of them and keep going forward. And I'll be back again with you guys tomorrow.